I'm Jamie Lewis and welcome back to TheBassist.net. Today I've got kind of an intermediate funk groove to show you that uses ghosted 16th notes and pentatonic runs over an E7 chord to sound just like this. <laughs> So make sure that you download the PDF file and also the backing track to accompany this lesson. And also make sure that you've already gone through the essential funk vocabulary series here at thebasis.net. That way you'll know all the different terminology that I'm using. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. First, let's talk about tone. I chose a J bass, a jazz bass style instrument on this because I love the way that finger funk sounds when you play uh, or when you solo up the bridge pickup. So just like with busy slap grooves that are made out of a bunch of 16th notes, I try to learn these grooves the same exact way. I'll just take them four notes at a time eight notes at a time, half of a bar, whatever, and I'll just loop that little piece over and over and over again until I've got it down. So here's the first four notes. I'll do that again. And once you got those first four down, the next four notes are just as easy. I'm gonna just plant my hand down on uh, the D and the G string just like this. Then I'm gonna pluck a D. I'm gonna repeat that little pat of the strings and then I'm gonna pluck the D string. So it'll look like this. And when you can play it like that, when you've got it at that speed, you're ready to move on. So the third beat is really, really easy. We got four 16th notes starting on an F sharp. We're gonna play two of them up to a G natural or an F double sharp, because we're kind of playing a sharp nine in this case. And then up to a G sharp, which is the third of that E7 chord. And when you've got that down, move on to the last four notes of that measure. And the way I'm gonna play that ghosted note on the D is I'm just gonna put my fingers down on the string like that, pluck the E, do the pat again, and then play the D. And if you can make it all the way through that first measure, you're ready to go back to the beginning and try putting it all together. In slow motion at first, it would look just like this. I'll do that again, I'll speed it up a little bit. So let's just apply that same exact process to the second bar. We'll play the first four notes over and over and over again. It begins on an E, I get two ghosted notes, and I just kind of pat the strings the first time, I pluck a, a ghosted D, and while I'm doing that, I maintain pressure and slide my hand down to that C sharp. So in other words, this is not what I'm doing. I'm not going and trying to make it there in time, especially when we increase the speed, that's just not gonna happen. So I play the E, and when I pat the strings and go to play that second ghosted note, my fingers are already traveling down the neck. And when you can play them at that speed, we'll move on to the next part. Begins with a ghosted note, just patting the strings playing a C sharp an octave higher this time, and then same thing, pat the strings again, and ghosting on the D string. And when you can do that, go back to the beginning of bar number two and play the first eight notes together like this. And the last eight notes, we'll just go ahead and put them together because they're actually really easy. It begins with two Ds in the higher octave, We'll pluck one D, an octave lower, and then same thing, I'm gonna just pat the strings and get that ghosted sound, and then play D sharp and E, two notes each. And again, the point here is for this to sound very staccato, that's what makes it sound funky. And when I can do that, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of bar number two and try to put the whole thing together. In slow motion first, just like this. And 
and you guessed it. If you've made it this far, we're gonna go back to the beginning and put the whole first two measures together. At a slow tempo first, it will look just like this. And again, the reason why we spent so much time in the beginning going over, you know, just the first four notes and then the first eight notes is because, well, if you take a look at the rest of the PDF file or, or just use your ears, this groove is hyper repetitive. So it's going to repeat itself a lot. We already put in the time in the beginning. So bar number three is identical to bar number one. We don't need to take the time to practice it. This is where things are gonna change, bar number four, check this out. We've still got this E, two ghosted notes, uh, the, the, the C sharp, but check out what happens here, watch this. It's really, really cool. So the way I'm executing that, I'm just gonna plant my fingers and then pluck the note, plant my fingers again, pluck the note, plant my fingers, pluck, same thing. So if I play bar number four in slow motion, it's gonna look just like this. And when I can do that, we're gonna head back to the beginning of this groove and play all four bars together. It should look just like this. If you're looking for a way to add some variation, or maybe this is too difficult for you, one thing you can do is, is take out the range function, meaning part of what's hard about this is, is the groove centers around this part of the neck, and then also this part, and it's kind of jumping back and forth. So just take these notes up here and bring them down, and the groove will be a little bit easier like this. You can also start changing up the notes. Like that time, I went to a G sharp and worked my way up chromatically. It's basically the same frets, I just dropped it down a string that time. So have fun practicing that. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments section just below this video and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. So have fun, practice up, and I'll see you again next time here at thebasis.net.